and we're back with another 60 HE update. And what do I have here? Look at this. Uh, are you going to carry it like that? I don't know. I will not. <laughs> but it's there and you can hold it. It looks really nice. And this is what originally is the keyboard travel sleeve is now a keyboard hard case. Now, just to clarify, this is only for founder and signature edition people. This doesn't come standard with the keyboard, just to make sure that you know that before we go on to all these things of this update. <clears throat> it's all related to signature edition and founder's edition. So let's take a close look at the hard case here. We added our take control keycap logo now. <laughs> and we have here a stealthy rooting logo. And then if we look inside of the hard case, we have our keyboard with oh, the puller that dropped out, uh, and, which you don't need to bring into your case, but you do need to bring your cable. And that's why we have the pocket here. It's mostly just for the cable, not really for other stuff. Um, and you can even bring switches with you, but I wouldn't do that. There's no point in doing that. So here's a strap that holds the keyboard inside. You can see it holds the keyboard inside really well. It will not drop out when you open it. You can easily open and close the strap here and take out the keyboard. Now we also made sure that this one has the male side of the Velcro and this has the female side of the Velcro so you will not damage your keyboard when you miss or you're screwing around with it or you're just too lazy and just do like this and that. So we actually started off making a keyboard sleeve made of felt but when we received the sample, we didn't like it because it left a lot of particles inside the keyboard if you would store it inside. So then we decided, okay, we need to change the material, but we want to keep the same design. Otherwise, we're going to have some timeline issues. We changed it to PU leather. But then, as you can imagine, having the keyboard sleeve with PU leather, um, it was a bit funky. And, and while we were doing it, we decided we have to have a backup. If that fills, then we can always have a backup. So we started looking for a hard case, some kind of hard case we could do. We found this one, made some adjustments to what we like, and we got both samples in and we decided, okay, the PU letter one, it's funny, we're not gonna do it. We're still within the same budget, we can do the hard case, so we went for the hard case. So again, this is what founder and signature edition people are going to receive. And then I also have here the other thing you're going to receive as founder and signature edition, which is the leather strap. Now, this is not the final colors. It doesn't even have any kind of embedding or text, uh, but this is a handmade sample to test the design and the structure. So to keep it short and sweet, uh, this one was made by my wife and that's it. No, <laughs> this one is made by my, my, my wife, the handmade sample, but we took a lot of time to figure out a design. We could have just gone with the same design as the, let me take this out, as the original strap. Uh, which is having an attachment here and then having the line on strap here and just only giving, for example, this piece as leather. But we wanted to try something new because we had the leather and we wanted to try to do a one piece design so we could inspire also a little bit, uh, let other people think about other ways of attaching it to your keyboard. Now I have here a keyboard I can show where I can put it in. You can see I just put it through the loop, uh, put it through what we call the clip and then you just close it here on the bowl binding, binding post screw. And then here you have a leather strap. Now again, this is not the final color. It's not even the final length. It should be a little bit longer and there's still some text missing on here. Uh, so there'll be more on that when we get a bit further. We have more samples coming, but that's the start of the leather strap. Now, if you have the signature edition, then you've been designing a beautiful PCB icon together with Eric. So I'm going to give this to Eric. He can better explain all the PCB icons and that experience. So the last two months, I've been really busy with everybody who got the signature edition to make sure they submitted their design and uh, everybody did. And for everybody who doesn't know, the cool thing about this design, the, the special perk for the signature edition, uh, was that people could place a little icon or design on the PCBA, which will be printed on every PCBA for the 6DHE forever. So it's a pretty uh, uh, cool spot to be in. Uh, and uh, a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these designs, these stories from people, they are touching, they are personal. And uh, let me, sadly I cannot highlight them all, but let me go through some of them. So here you now can see the design we made during a live stream. It's a, a 
undead princess with I think it was supposed to be roses which turned out, which turned out to be tulips and a flame thing which is pretty cool we made this doing a live stream uh, another one of my uh, which one I thought had a really cool story is the lighthouse uh, this person taught himself illustrator to create this unique lighthouse and he made use of the LED on the PCBA which is very creative um, I've also seen a lot of pets come by and uh, this one was one of the first ones uh, who uh, who got in touch with me and uh, I thought like hey this is like he uh, it's a very cute uh, cute dog and he even shared a picture and yeah so this way every icon almost has its own story everything unique one is a forklift and there's french fries <laughs> um, you can find a link down below in this uh, in this video or an update page uh, where you can see the whole overview of all the PCBA icons and you can take a closer look yourself or once you receive the keyboard take the switches out and uh, see what is beneath every key uh, I'm not gonna give it back to Calder Ta-da! Alright, so this is the final part of the update uh, I have to change gears a little bit because something that I've always done in my written blogs is go into more details on some parts that we find important or something we find that we want to do better and it's a little bit hard to find a way to communicate that also in the video format so this is one of the first times we're going to try that and the focus here is on the stabilizer so uh, just to clarify look this is a aluminum case where you can put the module in right so it's compatible with a lot of third-party cases so here we have the 60he module in the final we use white stabilizers uh, but this is just an example and to clarify these are the stabilizers that i'm talking about now this the thing is that we're not very happy with the sound of the stabilizers it's a little bit too rattly and shallow for our taste uh, so we've been looking into what causes the sound and how can we make this better now we did similar things with the Wooting 2 Lecker Edition and the Wooting 2 HE, but once you get into the subject, you find out that there's a lot of factors that play a role into you like or you don't like the sound. It's subjective, but it's also a big part of uh, what makes the sound it has many factors play that come together. And it's not as simple as, oh, I have a brand X stabilizers and therefore it sounds amazing. Um, it goes from the case design to this module, the screws, uh, what kind of sound dampening you have inside the module, and in our case, and the sound dampening underneath in the case. Uh, it goes as far as obviously the switches, um, but also the keycap you have installed onto the keyboard makes a huge difference in the sound of the keyboard and the sound of the stabilizers. Now, obviously we can't, so we can't just focus on one thing and say, okay, let's do that better and then it's solved, it solves all the problems. So it's a multitude of things. So what are we going to do to make the stabilizers feel and sound better than they, what they are right now? We have two things running. The first thing is the switch plate. So this is the plate, the metal plate, where we have all the switches installed. Um, the tolerances of the openings where the stabilizers are inst installed we're lowering down the tolerance, meaning that we're going to make the holes a bit more tight so the stabilizers have less wiggle room. Now, uh, there is a degree of high, medium, low tolerance, and we're going now for medium tolerance. We cannot go for low tolerance because low tolerance might cause uh, something that we have with the Lecker Edition, where if you install a stabilizer, it might scrape the plastic, and if the stabilizer is too stiff, uh, it might clamp the stem, or if, and it, when it's uh, too soft, um, it uh, might also clamp the stem. So there's more, it's a little bit more risky to go for low tolerance. So we're going for a medium tolerance right now. That should already help a bit with any kind of rattle sound, we think, with something we have to find out. The second thing we're changing is we're looking into other brand stabilizers. So we've been using a stabilizer, a new stabilizer mold from the manufacturer we work with in, on paper, they have a lot of good improvements compared to other stabilizers out there. But then in practice, it looks like they're not hitting the right tone that we're looking for. And we believe that might be one side, the tolerance of the, of the stabilizer themselves. So meaning how uniform are all the sizes and are they a little bit bigger 
than the recommended size for the cutout of the plate. But the second part is also the material of the stabilizer. So the, this manufacturer stabilizer has a bit more glass fiber mixed into uh, nylon to make it more stiff, which has positive effects when it comes to the assembly and it can have a positive effect also on the stabilizer function. Uh, but in this case, we believe it might also cause a bit more of a rattle noise. So we have other brand stabilizer coming in from Gatoron and we're going to try those out and see if we can find any big difference. Um, so the Gatron stabilizers have a slightly different design stabilizer than what we have right now and it's completely made of nylon so it's also softer and we are not sure yet uh, but it might make a difference. So that's something we're going to test out. And the final thing is, uh, you know, you might be asking yourself, why don't you just use a different lube or something? Now, <laughs> lube is an interesting story. In short, lube doesn't solve all your problems. It doesn't necessarily solve this problem. Uh, but what we are going to change is where this automatic machine that applies lube to the stabilizers, there's a certain degree of lube that can be applied automatically. And that amount of gram that is applied to the stabilizers was 0.13 and we're increasing that a bit more to 0.15 which is the maximum before probably the loop starts leaking out of the stabilizers and you know it gets like an oily mess and that's what we're trying to avoid but again the lube itself we have tested here tried like dipping it into a lot a lot more lube and then trying it again and it didn't solve the issue so lube is not the answer uh, or the it doesn't solve the problem in this case so that is something that's pending right now it's actually delayed our process a bit um, we don't know what the net effect will be and we expect within the next two weeks to have the new plate and also the other stabilizers to start testing and once that is all done we can improve everything and then we can really move on to the next step we are taking some preemptive measures by making sure we can already confirm the, ele the electronic board and start doing purchases purchasing on these parts and other parts that is already done in-house at the factory. So we can prepare already more and more for the PVT phase and MP phase, but there is a delay on approving this plate and the stabilizers. All right, big last part. I hope you enjoyed this update and we will be talking soon again. Bye-bye.